Hello, we are back. We're going to be doing a bush trip today. We're going to be flying in a place I've never been to and I probably never will do ever again. The thing is, I don't know what bush trip to do. I've got absolutely no clue. So, anyone have any idea? Anyone have any idea on what we should do? We got, we got a number of them. So, we've got all of these to do. We've done this one. We've done that one. Breckenridge to Mariposa. Yosemite did that. That was a big one. Um, I'm doing this one on my own. Australian Southeastern. Two hours, 57 minutes. That's not bad. That's pretty short. Let's do it. I've never been in Australia in this game before. So that's the route that we're going to be taking. We're going to be going from there to there. And it looks like there's a big, like, uh, yeah, a big mountain range in the middle. So yeah, we got Canberra Airport. And it says departure, so that's a, that's apparently where we're taking off from Canberra. And then we're going to Essendon Airport. Yeah, you know, just loading in the entirety of Australia. No big deal. Here you go, we're at Canberra. And this is our plane of choice for the day. Well, not plane of choice. This is the plane that the game wants me to take. And this is the route we gotta go. But we don't need any of this. And we don't need any of it because we've got the pink line. This pink line right here is what we have to follow. So as long as we follow that, we're fine. We are good. Um, then we've got a little map on the right here that tells us basically the, the way we need to go with all these little checkpoints and stuff. Let's have a look at our plane first of all, by the way. This is what we're, we're flying with today. Look, there's two guys in the plane. Two guys who look exactly the same, apart from the fact that one's got, like, a jacket on and he's got a hat. And then the other guy's just got a shirt and a tie. Let's take off then, shall we? And... I don't see a speedometer, that's the only issue, so I don't know how fast I'm going. Oh yeah, I see it now. Alright, here we go. We are up in the air. There you go, let's let's fly like this. Should probably avoid this mountain. What's funny is that it says this, um, it'll award an achievement for that particular activity, but there isn't actually any achievements apart from the ones that were in the base game. So any of the world updates don't have achievements for the bush trips, meaning I'm doing this for nothing. Getting a little bit of frame rate issues, but that's okay. It'll it'll clear up. It's not going to be like this all day. Because remember, you know, like the because the game is so big, and you know, it literally has to render the entire world. You know, it downloads data in from the you know from Bing Maps as you're playing the game. That looks like a really important building. Maybe that's where you know that's the government building or something. Oh, we got to fly left. War Memorial, possibly. You got like a big city area down here. Look at that. Big roundabout there. Huge. Huge thing. Huge sausage. Cool. Oh, the game wants me to do a really hard left turn now. Nice looking area. So this is that, um, this is what, the capital? Is it? Or is this, I'm not sure. Yes. Okay, this is the capital of Australia, which I, I didn't know was Canberra. I honestly thought it was Sydney, because I'm dumb. I don't know my Australian geography. So we are going to be going into the mountains, it looks like. I don't think I am going to use autopilot, you know? I don't think I need to. Got a little bit of wind, I think, trying to push me to the right. So it's like a southern wind. I'll, I'll reach Australia properly eventually in my Around the World tour. Because I am going around the world in this game. I'm, I'm doing it very slowly, doing it in my own time, going to as many different countries as I can. And I've done all of the Africas, basically done a chunk of Europe, but I need to explore Poland next. So I'm going to go to Warsaw and then probably take a small plane down to Katowice. So it looks like these we're going to have to go across these mountains over here, so we should probably start ascending a little bit. So if you look on the map, like this map right here, you can see what leg we're on. So you see the big pink line? That's the leg that we're currently on. Is there like a range? There's the range. Oh look, there you go. Awesome. It shows you exactly where we are. At least you know which way to go without using the in-game UI. Oh, I forgot to say, the in-flight movie today is um, Finding Nemo, because that's based in Australia. And then if we've got enough time, we'll start Finding Dory as well. They also, um, just the other day actually, released the um, the New Zealand update. And uh, one of the things they've actually properly 3D modeled and put into the game, officially, is um, the set of the film The Hobbit, which I thought was quite cool. Is there an Australia update? I think so. If, if there was an Australian update, this would be the update it was in, to be honest. Watch out for flying kangaroos. I mean, I'm more afraid of this so-called drop bear that everyone talks about. I don't know what a drop bear is, but 
all the Australians tell me you you yeah you want to avoid them, and I have no idea what that is. Is it like a TV advert or something? That's what my guess would be, right? It's like a TV advert for like a candy or something. It's an animal. Well, it's got the word bear in it. I'd assume it's some sort of grizzly bear or something. Oh yeah, that's it. It's it because we're in Australia, everything's upside down, so they would just fall. In fact, that means because it's Australia, that means I've got to do something as well. Hang on a minute. I gotta do that. There you go. I flipped it in OBS. <laughs> it's the Australian update. Ah, there you go. <laughs> we'll fly through this little gap and then we'll we'll make a little left turn. See, like this is the sort of area I mean, like where you could take over Australia. Like this little river here. You got fresh water. You've got mountains. You've got a bunch of trees. You could make a little civilization right there, and no one would know. You know what I mean? Right there. Still think making a round base off it would be neat. I, I think so as well. I looked at like the world in Minecraft recreated and it's like 10 gigabytes. Massive, absolutely huge world that you'd need to host. Yeah, true, true. This game is 100 and the rest because of all the world updates. Each world update is like an extra 10 gig. So it's like 150 to 160 now. No, but there's literally a, a, a map you can download for Minecraft that is the world, but it's not like one to one scale. I like this little area, look, it's like nice and flat. Sit in the other chair for a minute. Yeah, you got like a nice flat area with some hills. This would make a great place for a new a new civilization as well. You got like a big open area with like a woodland over there. You could build all your houses like around here and then get all the wood from over there. And then, you know, you've got your water over there, fresh water. Australia is like the perfect place to create your own civilization. Is there an Australia map for Minecraft? Just the the whole of Australia, and then the rest of it's like, endless ocean. Because that might be a bit better. I don't think we're too far from our first landing spot either. See look, I'm not touching the controller at all, and it's pushing me, like, to the right. The wind is quite annoying in this. I'm actually playing Minecraft at the moment, a little bit. What I'm doing is, um, I've set up some farms, some like, absolutely huge farms, and I'm gonna, like, really abuse villager trading. I, I don't really care about, like, diamonds or, you know, pro actually progressing in the game, I'm just gonna be a, be a farmer and just trade the heck out of everything and get rich that way. Because villager trading is so broken in Minecraft as it currently stands. Yeah, that's my next goal in, in it to get a mending villager. So I'd probably have to, I'd have to heal it though to get um, one emerald trades. Otherwise, if you use a regular villager, then it could cost like 20 emeralds each book. Whereas if you let, if you cure a, a, a you know, a zombie, it can, co it can literally cost one, usually 30, right? I think, yeah, I think it can like range though, can't it? It can range from like, It'll be anywhere from like 26 to about like 32 or something. Building in central London could be interesting. Because then you could have like northern London and southern London. Or like, you know, from the Thames. And like, you could almost have like two factions. You could have a faction north and a faction south. And they're kind of like against each other. That could be fun. Like a team-based Minecraft survival multiplayer, where it's like North London versus South London, using the Great Britain map. And it could be like territorial and stuff. I feel like you'd need quite a lot of people to make it like excellent though. You'd like assign roles and like jobs and stuff. So you'd have like a prime minister or a king or something, and they kind of dictate what happens. Like whether you go to war with the, uh, with the other side or not, or whether you keep peace. When you try and push the boundaries. There's a mod pack I've I've seen recently that looks really interesting, and I would like to give it a go. Yikes! One in five hundred world map is ninety gigabytes. Jeez. No, it'd be Vault Hunters. The Vault Hunters Minecraft pack looks really cool. You use what's called a vault crystal to go into a vault, and they're like randomly generated each time you go in, and they will have like monsters and loot in there, and you can level up like a special level bar. With those levels, you can get like abilities. So you can do a dash, you can do a heal, a group heal, haste, so you mine stuff faster. And then you can get like armor, which is kind of basically just like Borderlands. Armor with plus 10 def like defense points and stuff, and it, you know, it's all randomly generated. The, the, that's the main issue I have with regular Minecraft, it's the world generation. Like, you walk like two meters from like your spawn location and you get like a colossal hole that goes to the center of the earth. And it's just so unrealistic. Don't get me wrong, the new caves look great. I just wish the new caves were slightly deeper. And they had the original cave entrances 
that led you to the big areas. I just don't like how you can look into the ground and it's just a sheer drop for like a hundred blocks into a massive hole. You don't get that. You wouldn't see that in real life. Also, I just noticed the the ground over here is turning into that like that classic Australian like orange color. You see this? Have you heard of the Terralith mod? That's got some pretty insane world gen. Basically, it uses, like, how do I explain it? It doesn't add any new blocks to the game at all, but it will add loads of new biomes. So it's all vanilla. And it, you know, it, it keeps the caves, the new caves. Um, it adds, like, volcanoes and stuff as well. It's pretty crazy what Terralith can do. I wonder when we have to land. It can't be too far away. Oh yeah, here you go. So we're all almost on the last bit of this leg. So look, we're, we're here. We go up to this sort of marker. Then we turn left a tiny bit. And then literally, that's where we land. Right there. I like the idea of, like, RPG-based stuff. So, like, you start out, like, really weak. And then gradually, like, you'll, like, explore, like, a castle or something. And you'll, like, get health upgrades and swords that do, you know, incremental more damage. I like that sort of thing. A bit like Minecraft Dungeons. All right, we're getting really close to our, where we need to land, and I don't see it yet. Yeah, this is it. This is where we need to land, right there. See it? So let's put on first level of flaps and swing around to the left so we can get a nice run up. Because you can see the, um, the angle of our runway there. So we're better off to swing left like that. Travel this way for... A, a, you know a short amount of time and then kind of swing back around and we should probably start descending a little bit as well okay now we can start turning and making our way back we should be able to make a nice little landing can't see the uh can't see the runway yet yeah there it is look at this coming into land perfectly look at this angle we got coming up this is a, this is good descend a little bit reduce power by quite a bit i don't know how many flap levels i have by the way so we're just going to use the one. In fact, no, we're going to use another one. Okay, it hasn't really done anything. Here we go. We're a bit high. So we're going to push down a little bit. Okay, nice. Here we go. Straight on the runway. Turn the engine off. Pull up. That was a a very, very long landing. <laughs> we did it though. Leg completed. Nice. Cool. So where are we going to now? We've just made it here. So we've now got to go uh, this way. And we got to land here. And I put the parking brake on while I started up the engines because we've probably got not got much runway left because we took so long to land. And a takeoff. Just about had enough runway. Look at that little house there. Wouldn't it be neat to live at that little house? Just living in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of the Australian bush. Imagine that, right? In order to get your shopping, you'd have to travel by airplane to the nearest city. That'd be cool. That'd be like a day, though. That's the only issue. Because you'd spend an hour flying there, and then like an hour flying back. But yeah, like I remember like I did a Let's Play of Tech It like a very long time ago with a friend. And we, we, we didn't really, well, I guess we kind of found something. We found a thing with um with blaze rod. So I think it's like if you macerate a blaze rod, you get like blaze powder. And from then on, you can like three blaze powder you get from macerating is enough to create one and a half blaze rods in the equivalent exchange yeah so it was like free power basically you could get this like crazy expensive setup just to generate free power it was really expensive but with the right setup you could do it it could be quite cool to go back on uh back on tech it get on some modern mod packs i've tried and they're all too complicated I tried Sky Factory, and that is just wild. I like the early game of Sky Factory with the trees, but like as soon as you've got like a mob spawner, you get like 47 trillion like loot bags, all with completely random items that you're never going to use. And it's just, how do you sort that out? How do you sort it? You need to like make a sorting system. It's just too complicated. That's the issue. A lot of them just, it's just so much 
to learn. I like the look of that place. I would live there. I would live in this local town for local people. Like, imagine that, you know? Like, everyone in that town probably knows each other. If I rocked up one day with a suitcase, they'd be like, who the heck is this guy? What is he doing here? He doesn't belong here. He's not a local person. And by the end of the day, you know, everyone in the town would know. But, you know, like, I, I will eventually play some mod packs and stuff, maybe, in Minecraft. I've got some ideas. It's just, again, there's too much to do. There's too many games to play. I just don't have the ability to do all of it. Like, next week, we're going to start um, the first Crash Bandicoot game and try and go for all the achievements in that, if I can. We might then take a break from it and play, like, a Clone Era pack or, or two or something and then do Crash 2 is, is my plan. So do one, small break, two, small break, three, small break. That's what I'm thinking, but who knows, I might not even like it. I might start playing it and think this, eh, not for me. The American Truck Sim DLCs coming out. Oklahoma and Kansas have been announced and they're being worked on. You've got, like, Euro Truck Sim with the Balkans update or whatever. The, the, the Balkans DLC and the Russia DLC coming. You know, alongside the games that we play, there's going to be DLCs coming out for them all the time. Getting your region. Yeah, yeah, they're doing the Balkans next, I think. Speaking of, there is um there is a bush trip in, in, in the Balkans. Oh, there you go. Um, Rijeka to Santorini in the Balkans. R-I-J-E-K-A to Santorini. That's how I'd say it. And that one's eight hours long. Rijeki. That's how it seems to me to pronounce it. Goes all the way from the top corner to the bottom right corner. Top left to bottom right. I've got to do all these bush trips at some point. And on top of that, I would also really like to do all the landing challenges as well. But landing challenges are so difficult. Especially landing a Boeing 747. That thing is impossible. I hate the Boeing 747. It's such a difficult one to land. But the, the, the one I like is the Airbus A320neo. That's my favourite. I also kind of like this one as well. It's not bad. So this is like the digital one where you've got like all like proper electronic buttons and screens and stuff. Whereas the one I learned, like I first used in this game, the one that you learn in the tutorials and stuff, it's like an analogue one. You don't get a map, you don't get screens, you just get little dials. I don't know how you'd do it, but it'd be kind of cool to make your own make your own bush trips. Because I think it'd be really cool to do a Route 66 bush trip. Imagine that, you start off near, near like the nearest airport to Route 66, and then you just fly up the whole route, landing at little airstrips along the way. Just follow the road. I'd like that. That'd be great. So I don't know how you'd like make a custom bush trip, but I would definitely like to. And I know that you can even like sell them on the, on the Microsoft Flight Sim store, so that could be really cool. Imagine that, charging like $7.99 for a bush trip. I've only actually completed two bush trips so far. Discover Sweden, and there's that one where you go through like the Californian like mountains, where we discovered that um, that circular city that's only there for like one day a year. I can't remember what it's called now. The Burning Man, that's it. Burning Man the Festival. It's like an art festival in the middle of the Californian desert. And the whole city is like circular. But yeah, those are the first two that we've done. I started one on my own the other day, which is Vancouver Island. And oh, the mountains in Vancouver Island are incredible. And the other thing I quite like to do is um, FS Economy. That, oh, I signed up for it the other day and I'm waiting for like a game account now. Basically, what FS Economy does is it's like a, a little client that you add into the game or you have open on the side. And it'll, like, track your progress. A bit like Score Spy, right? But it's kind of its own thing. Its own little additional client. And you pick jobs to do from the website. And then you click connect. And it'll set it all up in your game, I think. And you basically can deliver passengers or cargo to a certain location from a certain location. And then you get money for doing that. And you have to, like, rent the planes until you've got enough to buy your own plane. And rent the fuel. I say rent the fuel, buy the fuel. Why do I keep saying rent the fuel? I explained it the other day, but... And I said that as well. Renting fuel. So, once I've got a game account, because it's, it's really weird how they've done it. Like, you have to, like, sign up for an account, and then you post on their forum saying, Hey, I want an account. And then they will give you an account. It's really odd. <laughs> very strange how it works you have, to, you have to post on like a forum from like 2006 that sort of thing and then they will like 
grant you an account. And I think I'd like if I were to play FS Economy, I would start in my hometown of Birmingham, UK, and then I would just like do little biplanes like everywhere. I wouldn't even like try and do like really big like jumbo jets and stuff. I would just do little biplanes. And eventually I'd get, you know, like really, really far away from home and stuff. Cause then like eventually if you played enough, you would like learn the places. You'd be like, oh yeah, I'm going from Birmingham to London again. Okay, cool. I know this route, like the back of my hand. And you wouldn't even need a map at that point. You'd just be able to fly there and be like, cool, I can do this. Cause you'd know the area and know what to look for. Gold Spice coming up on 10k users, cool. Isn't Joe Quan almost at 3 billion? I think he's at like 2.9. Oh yeah, as well, um, Vagu posted the other day on Twitter. He's at 9,000 FCs. Vagu is going to be the first person to hit 10k. Easily. Easily the first person to hit 10k FCs. 2.937 bill, yeah. Joe Quan will be first to 3 bill. Vagu will be first to 10,000. Who will be second to 3 bill? Well, it's either going to be Eva or Taka. Yeah. I'd like it to be Taka. But maybe that's favoritism. Because we've played like loads of games with Taka before. But you see what I mean? Though? This is the sort of game where you can like have this open on your main screen. And have a TV show on the right hand screen. And just like watch a show in its entirety while you're flying. Because if you know where you're going. Like I do. Like we just go straight for another like. 60 70 miles or whatever you know you can just sit here and watch a tv show and you know, occasionally look back at your flying you're not gonna crash you're in the middle of the air i wonder if there's an ability to like plug you know your phone in here with like a auxiliary cable and stuff and you know watch a tv show on this screen here that'd be funny watch would i lie to you on here or qi they do seem four by three though so you would get black bars so yeah, I think it's just like over here, it seems. That's probably where we're going to have to land. Just over there behind this little mountain. Because like you can see down here, we got to make a, a sharp left turn here. And then we'd land like right there. So I think that's what we need to do. So let's descend a little bit. Because we are kind of high up. I want to be like scraping the top of these mountains here. Hasn't rendered in yet, but it's probably over there somewhere. Maybe that's it. Oh look, you can see there's a little river there. So it's just across from the river. Usually they'll give you a picture. Um, hang on a minute. Where would it be? Navlog? Navlog. There you go. There's a picture there. So it seems to be next to the lake. Like almost directly next to it. And it is like a little runway. It's like a proper runway. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're too high up. Do you see it? It's literally just there. That little strip there. So in that case, we're going to fly around. So we're going to like rotate right and then down. There's no landing gear on this thing, so that's good. We need to descend quite a bit. Nice area. Nice area. With all the mountains and stuff. This game looks great, doesn't it? Look at that. You've got all like the little roads and the trees and all these like generated houses and stuff. Oh, it's so good. Looks incredible. Right, so where is it? Is it literally just this? It is. Cool. We're like straight on. We're actually like directly on. Seems like a pretty short runway. So we gotta make sure we stop a bit sooner than we did on that previous one. Okay, now now next level of flaps. Okay, we got maximum flaps on now. Here we go. Can I land this? Okay. Cool. Braking. Whoa. That was a bounce. Ooh. We're alright. We're okay. Pretty short landing area though. Not gonna lie. Pretty short. There you go. Leg completed. Cool. Well that's that. We are now here. And we started up there. So the next one is just over here. YMFD. Cool. Well I think before we um... Before we take off from here, the obvious thing that we do, we've got to turn around. Because we've got, like, no runway left. Look at that. There's even a nice little turnaround area right here as well. That's got to be what this is for. Alright. Engines into throttle. All my flaps are up. Whoa. That was a bit close. <laughs> we might have honestly been better off taking off with, like, one level of flaps on or something. Alright. Let's do a rotate right. Even though we have to go kind of left. In fact, I'm glad we don't have any more, like, fuel or any more weight on this aircraft. Otherwise, we might not have taken off in time. 
So yeah, for like performance wise, um, at the start we were getting a few frame rate issues in the city that we started in, Canberra. And that was like 48 to 50 frames per second. But now as soon as we're out of the main city area, like it's a perfect 60. Like no issues whatsoever, 60. Uh, the northwestern Kimberley coast, that one's 2 hours 22 minutes. So that one's a little bit shorter than this one even. There's northwestern Kimberley coast. There's from the sea into the desert. Those first two are about the same length. Oh no, there's like five. There's North Queensland Coast, which is 3 hours 23. That's probably the better one. Oh, that's in the X-Cub as well. Ooh, that's interesting. Because that's uh, that's one that can land on water. You've got the Australia Southeastern, which is this one. You've got the Tasmanian Odyssey. So I'm guessing that's going from Tasmania to like... Like having to look around Tasmania and then going up to Australia, maybe? Oh no, it's literally just go around Tasmania. Tasmanian Odyssey. What about North Queensland Coast? That one looks quite nice. That reminds me of my, like, completely vocal cover of All Star by Smash Mouth. That was utterly dreadful. Do not look that up. I could find it, actually. And the funny thing is, I can play it on the stream because it's not copyright. It was such a bad cover that it, it doesn't get picked up by the copyright system. Here we go. Somebody wants to tell me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming. Fed to the rules and it hit the ground running. It didn't make sense not to live for fun. Your brain gets mad, but your head gets dumb. So much to do. It would be so funny if, if like, this VOD got muted because of this. You'll never shine if you don't glow. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on, go play. Hey now, you're a rock star. Get the show on, get paid. And all that glitters is gold. Only shooting stars break the mold. It's a cool place, and this here gets colder. You're bundled up. Alright, you've heard enough. <laughs> Gotta land on this right here. YMFD. And it looks like, because it's a circle, it's going to be a little bit of dirt. So that's going to be interesting, landing on a dirt strip. On a plane that, you know, likes to take its time to land. And it's probably, like, over there by those two little dots. That's what I'm guessing it is. And we need to land there. So we've got to make a hard left turn and probably put some flaps on and start looking for a little airfield to land at. So what... Do you think this is it? I think I might have a quick look at the uh, at the nav log. So it's there. So it's right next to it. It's like literally at a crossroads. It's literally there. Crossroads in front of a, a maze field. Which, yeah, it's it's got to be this then. So we're coming in way too steep at the moment. Way too steep. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go around again. We're going to do a little loop and drop some more altitude. Because we're way too high at the moment. At least I think this is where we land. If not, that's okay. We can take off again. This is it based on the map. It's coming a little bit lower. I think we're okay. It seems like an uphill one as well. I don't think I've ever landed on an uphill runway. Engine off. And... Just ignore the flying cars on the road next to us. There were a couple of flying cars there. Nice. Awesome. We did it. That was the next leg in the bush trip. See, yet again, we've got no bush trip logo. Where sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. And I don't know why. Cool, so that's that. Why men? Why? And to that I reply, who knows? So let's see. Yeah, look at that. That's the airport we're going to be landing at. It's like a proper, full-size, full airport. This might be a very interesting takeoff. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Up a hill. Hopefully it'll act as like a ramp. Oh, went over the road. That's fine. That's all right. <laughs> Just casually went across the road. That's all right. I, I need to play through the game again. Because, like, we've got the DLC confirmed now, right? Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree. So I've got to get, like, a good playthrough going. Because the one I got all the achievements on, I'm now on New Game Plus 3. And I don't really want to start the DLC on a New Game Plus. 
So my, I think I might like do the whole game again, but just like not finish the game, if that makes sense. And if I did, I'd probably stream it. And I think if I'm going to do it again, I want to go for like a strength build. Because I did a dex build, um, like with a, a, a katana for my main like proper playthrough. And that was fun. But I feel like the, the problem I was having is that I could like really like, I was kind of struggling to get um, like to knock them down to like do um you know what I mean like what what's it called poise damage I was struggling to get the poise or stance damage or whatever it's called so I think if I were to do it again though I, I would definitely not use spirit summons this time because spirit summons kind of ruin the boss fights like I, I would easily get through some of the bosses on my first try just because of the spirit summons so if I'm going to play through Elden Ring again I'm not using spirit summons again taking out Melania though was like probably my best gaming feat of all time either that or like the Binding of Isaac, to be fair. Getting 100% on that. Either one of those has been my biggest gaming feats. But Melania was really horrible to take out. Healing on every single hit. Ugh. But yeah, the neighbours got like, um... Got a dog not long ago. They used to have one. And that thing was a, a little, like, yappy one as well. He used to just never stop barking. And this one is exactly the same. This one just doesn't stop barking. I'm not even a fan of the sort of dog. I can't I can't remember the name of it, but it's not like a big one. The sort I like are um are border collies. But uh, you know, in in a way like a doggo is only as good as their owner. I also think that as well. If the owner of the dog is a is a real piece of work, then their dog's going to be pretty horrible. Doggos are nice. And so are catos. These three achievements here. Complete the Nevada bush trip without any navigation assistance. I did it. And it didn't grant me the achievement. The only other thing I'm thinking is if it if it's like referring to a different one. Like if that's not the right bush trip that I did. But I, I think it is because those are the three bush trips that are in the base game. And there aren't any other achievements for the other ones. For all of the world updates. So I, I think it's just bugged. And the other one I can't do is like complete the weekly uh, like event or whatever. The weekly activity. I haven't seen a weekly activity or event. That's the issue. I don't know how you would do one. And there's an achievement to do one, and then there's an achievement to do ten. I haven't even seen one since I got the game in December, so how am I, how am I going to get ten weekly achievements? The only other thing I could think of, and they do do this, they do like a community fly-in, they call it, on Twitch, where like some of the developers of the game will like, you know, do a little like two hour flyover with the community. Like they'll be playing online on certain servers and stuff and you've got to like, I reckon we turn left at this lake, you know. And it looks like we're getting to some more civilized areas. Like if you see like all of these little dots up here, you know, there's more dots there than there are down here. So I'm assuming that we're heading towards a city which means we're getting really close to the end i think oh yeah look there's the end literally right there yeah we're really close to the end now so i think at this one right here is like where it wants us to start, to start descending maybe if i really wanted i could literally fly in like just perfectly straight i could go up there to that lake and then land there if i really wanted but i'm gonna do this properly we've just we've we're, we've done this but then again, this is quite a small plane. Like, this plane only goes about 110 miles an hour. Or 110 knots, even. With, like, a proper jet engine, you could do this flight in about an hour, maybe. Yeah, it'd be, like, an hour and ten minutes. Well, we got a big building. What's all this, then? We've got buildings. They are loading in. These are the big custom buildings. So the airport should be just over there, this way. To our right, somewhere. My computer's realising that it actually has to load stuff in now. It's like, oh... Wait, there's a city here? So is this Melbourne or is this Victoria? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. Oh, it's going to take us right through the centre of the city, isn't it? Oh, look, there's like a sports arena there as well. Oh, man. Look at this. Hooey. This looks incredible. Got to get even lower, I think. Oh, it wants us to go through the centre. Here we go. We're going to go through the centre and then we're going to land at the airport. Oh, this is great. Look at this. Got like, you know, a bunch of homes and stuff there. Here we go, frame rate's a bit choppy now. Sports venues, you've got like the main city centre. Look at all these buildings. Yeah, look at that. Woo-wee. You're getting a stable 26 frames per second. <laughs> the jumps to 40 every now and then. 46, 27, 49. But again, remember that I am streaming at the same time, so it does take a bit more computing power than it does normally. 
Oh, snap. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Come on. Hey, oh. <laughs> we did it. We went under the bridge. Oh, there's another bridge. Another bridge. It was. It's kind of screaming at me to pull up. I've got to put on full power now. We're going to go under this bridge, and then we're going to do our, like a hard right. And then we're going to go uh, and land. While we're here, we might as well do it, right? While we're here. Here we go. And... That's bridge number two. <laughs> Getting some low frame rates, but that's fine. Is that like a horse racing ground right there? Looks like it. I, I, it would make a good GTA game, this. This area, I think. Like, sure, we are getting frame drops, but, like, it's one of those games where it doesn't really matter that much. Like, sometimes it, it you know, it does, like, completely clog up. But for the most part, it's not that bad. Right, okay, we, we've got to land here. This is the airport. Or at least, yeah, I, I was going to say, at least I think it's right here, but it, it definitely is now. Says we're too high, but we're okay. Engine all the way off. And there we go. We did it. We have finished the bush trip. It is done.